Hey gamers, today we're going to look at Francis Drake and the expansion. Let's check it out. So setup for the first game that you play is very easy. As you see, they already have uh, this little track here that you can use for your first game. Any additional games, if you want to switch the game up a little bit, they give you these cards, which are basically the same icons that you see located here. But uh, here you can just shuffle this deck and then you can put them out in any different order. And that way you can have different games every time you play. Now, the first time they do suggest you use this generic way. And then after that, you can start shuffling these cards. Uh, now there are two different decks in, in the uh, box there. They do have different colors at the top and that just depends on how many players you are playing with. The rule book will let you know what color cards you should be putting out depending on the number of players. And of course the base set goes up to five players. Now what you're going to do is you're going to have this little round marker here. It's this little ship. He'll go right here and for all three rounds you'll just move them up to indicate which round you are on. All players will start with their own little tiny ship that they'll put here and whatever player order they're starting off. They're also going to receive a few of these cubes. They'll get four of them. Uh, three of them they're going to put up here and this is for the second half of the game which I'll explain later so everyone would have their colors here. They'd have an extra color here and I'll explain why they need this block in a minute. Uh, they'll also get some of these discs, a lot of these discs in fact, that they'll be using to place out in the first half of the game. The first half of the game is basically this track and they'll be placing them along the track in this order here, like so. Now, I'm going to get to where each one of these symbols mean in a moment, but first off, I also want to mention that they do have a few other things with them. They have these discs that they'll be using in the second half of the game, which has to deal with this area here. They'll also have these two ship tokens that they may or may not get to use on the second half of the round. I'll show you how they do that in a minute. Uh, you're also going to place, place out these three uh, tokens here and the areas located just like that and you can flip them over um, as you see different they have different victory points on them and different amount of guns I'll get to what that means in a second the game also has these little glass bobbles uh, depicting silver gold and rubies and as you see on the board there are spots where you would put one and you would replenish these every round according to the marker there. And of course there'd be way more of these set up, but you set all those up as well. And then you're ready to play the game. Of course each player will also receive their own little treasure chest, which is where they'll be depositing that gold, silver, and uh, rubies to be counted at the end of the game. Game also has several of these little other cubes here. These cubes, the gray cubes represent crew, black cr cubes are guns, and the purple cubes are trade. Uh, each player will also have a little starting marker here that will start on the number four. As you see, four is a wide track because all players start with four victory points. I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, each player will also get an investor card as well. It's a one-time use in the game, and I'll explain what that does in a sec and then you are ready to play. So what's going to happen, like I said, in this order, whatever the order is here, players are going to put out these little discs along the track like so and gather certain resources for their trip. So for instance, let me get to the basic ones. If you go to any of these gray cubes here, of course that's crew. Why would you need crew? Well in the second half of the game, you're going to be going out here and you're going to be attacking fortresses, for instance, and they could have extra crew on them. In fact, some say, hey, this has at least two crew on uh, two uh, soldiers on here. So you need crew to battle those soldiers. Now also later on in the game someone's going to be putting out some of these little nasty things and what they are is they'll shuffle, they'll take four of them, flip them over. They're different denominations from zero to like two, one and two as you see here. Uh, and what they'll do is they'll place them down face down on the board. Now you won't get to know what those are. Those are going to be a surprise. So you're going to have to guess how many more crew are there. So you're going to need a lot of crew to take on those soldiers. Another thing you'll want to get is these black cubes here on the board. Those are guns. And you'll need guns. If you see on this board here, there's little guns depicted. 
on each one of the forts in some of the cities, also in some of the galleons here. There are guns needed to defeat uh, that galleon. Also, someone in the game, and I'll explain who, is going to shuffle some of these, get three of these. These are just like the soldier tokens. They're going to flip them over, get to look and see what they are. Some have no guns, some have two, some have two, and they're going to hide them out you know, here in various places, you don't know what they are. So you'll need to gather a lot of guns just in case you're going to be raiding fortresses, uh, cities, or galleons in the game. Now, another thing in the game they have is barrels. Uh, barrels are these cool little tokens here, uh, barrel tokens. And you want to get barrels so you can travel in the second part of the round. As you see, it's kind of divided into four sections here. We have a green, a purple, a yellow section, and a red section and what you're doing and this is with that fourth cube here is at the end of the round when everyone makes it to the harbor you're going to count up how many barrels you collected if you only had one you would place your token there two here three here and four out there uh, so that lets you know where you can place your people so if for instance, if yellow was right here, they would not be able to play over in the yellow side here or on the red side here because they didn't have enough barrels to travel that far. So barrels are traveling in the second part of the game. So those are some of the basic ones you can get. Let me talk to you, talk to you about these special ones that are in the game. First off, you see the shipyard here. The shipyard will upgrade your little tiny ship into a bigger ship. Now, why would you want this? Well, bigger ships, you have to have a bigger ship if you want to attack one of these galleons here. So, if you want to attack one of the big dogs and get some big points, you need to upgrade your ship. And that's one of the few places you can go to upgrade your ships. Someone like the queen here, queen will give you an upgrade. As you see, there's only one spot for the queen though, so first one to her will get that upgrade. Plus, they'll get a gun and a trade. Let me talk about trade here. As you see, there's another place to get trade here. Trade are the these purple cubes and what you would do with trade is you would you can park in the second half of the game you can collect some trade tokens here which will give you points at the end of the game but you need trade tokens or trade cubes I should say to get the trade tokens now another special place here is the tavern uh, what happens is the first player there they get a plus one on their die roll the next player there they don't get a plus one but they can still roll the die you have this one single die here and you're gonna roll it and depending on the number determines what reward you will get now usually it's crew, but if you rolled a one or a two, you're going to be stuck with just getting a ghost ship. And as I showed you, I showed you this, the ghost ship token. I'll tell you what it does in the second round. But if you did go to the tavern and you did get a ghost ship, you'll add this to your tokens for the second round. Other than that, you'll just pick up crew there. The Admiral. The Admiral is the one that lets you decide. You'll get to pick three of these tokens, get to look at their values, and put place them face down on all three of the galleons where only you will know what type of guns are there. So it basically gives you a little advantage in the game because you know who has the most guns and how many guns to, uh, to collect if you want to attack one of these big ships. Also, a cool thing about the Admiral, he has a little gold icon on him. For any gold that's left over for that round that no one stole, you will, he will give you an extra victory point. Now, same thing with the governor here. He lets you uh, shuffle and deal out those little army cards where only you will know how many soldiers are in these fortresses. So it kind of gives you some inside information. He'll also pay you a victory point for each silver that is not stolen at the end of, e at the, end of the round. And also, he has this little arrow moving up. He will move you one space up in the turn order for the second part of the round, regardless of where you land in the harbor. So he's really nice. Of course, you have Francis Drake, which is amazing. You can't see it maybe, but he has two interconnecting circles, which means if yellow player was to play what place one here, they would get two crew and two guns. That's incredible. But their next turn must be on Francis Drake again. They must play another place another one here on their next turn and get one gun or one crew. Now the reason why that's significant is whenever you place a token anywhere across this track here. You may always go forward, but you may never go back. So for instance, if Yellow placed their first one here to get guns, on their next turn they couldn't go back and get crew. Nope, they'd have to go all the way up here to get crew. Now if they got crew, the next thing they could do is Francis Drake. If they wanted to go, they could get something out here next, but they could never go back. You can never go backwards, you can only go forwards. 
So this game has a lot of interesting balances where you want to be the first one to get some of this great stuff, but also you don't want to get too far ahead because you may pass over some really awesome stuff you may need later in the game. Anyway, uh, the Panas uh, is what you will get. It's basically the long boat. Uh, there are only two available for each round. The first player to get there will also get an extra crew. And what this does, you'll put this on your player board. Now, I forgot to mention that players have a really cool player board here. Uh, let's say this is this is actually for the blue player, but you can place all your special uh, uh, people you get. Like this is the informer, but you could also place the and they have the tokens for them: the governor and the admiral. You can place them here if you got them, just to show you that hey, at the end of this round, I'm gonna get points for both you know gold and silver that's left out open. And of course, I'll talk about the informer in a moment. Uh, but you can also put your trade tokens here. Uh, your longboat will go here if you have it. Any crew, any guns go here. Uh, any uh, fabrics, or I should say just trade, will go in this area here. And then any barrels will go here. So it's a nice little player board they have. They also have a place for your supplies. I couldn't put it on this board, but it's really nice. Uh, you can just put all the extra supplies here and pull from it every round. So that's really cool as well. But anyway, so you put this on your little ship tile, and that means in the second part of the game, remember I told you, uh, if you wanted to attack this fortress, you would have to pay two guns and however many crew you would need. I don't know what's underneath that. But if you had the longboat, you could avoid paying those guns. So it's basically like you're sneaking in under the guns, and now you just have enough to, need to have enough crew to fight those soldiers. So that's really neat. Again, there's only two uh, each round that are available. Now, next year up, we have the Informer. The Informer only has one space as well. He gives you a trade, and he has a very neat uh, superpower. Uh, you can, it's your choice, if you want to, before you go out there, you can search and look at one of these tiles and see what it is. Ooh, this is two guns. I don't want to go there. Or you could, you know, during the second round of the game, be out there, flip over the token, see, see something you don't like, and you can switch it with one of the other two. Now, the only thing is, you cannot look under you know what you're switching it for. You can only look at this one and switch it out with another one and hope you got one better. So that's what the informer can do for you each round. Now, one of the coolest ones down here is the uh, Golden Hind. If you're the first one there, there's only one available spot there, but you'll get to put this token into your uh, set for the next turn. Now, I'm about to explain why what this does in a minute. But finally, at the end of it, you can also go over here to the investor and what it is you have this token that they gave you at the beginning of the game it is a one-time use only so you can use it anytime within these three rounds and it can do one of three things for you uh, it, you can give you it can give you one crew and two guns or one gun and two crew or it can upgrade your ship so if you miss the ship upgrades here and here and you're like oh man how am I gonna get a ship upgrade I really want one this turn you can cash in on your investor. Now, when you do that, you do lose four victory points, which is why everyone starts here at the four track, because if someone wants to turn in their investment at the very beginning of the game, they'll just go back to zero on the track. Now, finally, they have the dock side here. As you see, they have colors for each one on the dock. Uh, so that means each player can only place one token there at the end. They don't have to. They can go straight to the harbor if they want to. But if they wanted to, Yellow could place it here, and they would get one of the following items, a crew, a gun, or a barrel. So basically, it's like a last-ditch effort to get some stuff you may need before you start sailing and pirating the land. And then finally, if you're just ready to go on to the harbor, then you can go ahead and place your boat over there, and the first one there is in the number one spot, and then so on and so forth for the other spots, and that allows the turn order for the next round. So let's get into the next round. In the next round, of course, the first thing every player is going to do is put their barrels together, and they're going to put out their little tokens on their cubes there, and the areas to show where they can travel to. After that, in player order there, the players are going to take their little disc here, numbered one to four, and they're going to put them upside down. They're not going to show where they're at, and they're going to put them out in any order they want to. Like, I don't have to put out the one first. I can put out my three first, and I can go here, I can go here, I can go here, but I can't go into the red because, you know, for instance, I only, let's say I only had three barrels. I couldn't place one in red because I don't have four barrels, so I had to place this one, let's say, here. 
Now, every other player is going to do this. They're going to play it, and re regardless of how many spots are open, they're just going to stack it on top of the one. And everyone, like yellow would take a turn, then red, then orange, then green. Then yellow would take another turn, red, orange, green. Just, just something like that. It would just go in turn order until everyone has used their little tokens. After that, you're going to flip them over, and you're going to see who has priority for each one of those sets. So, for instance, let's say there was a blue player here, and blue player came here and they played uh, they played another token as well well if they play whoever played the lowest number would get to go first and attack this fort and the same thing would go for the galleon here for the trade uh, for cities as well uh, if there is a tie then what you use you use the player order track to break tie breakers now, the reason why it's very important to go first in a lot of these turns is that it, whoever goes first not only gets the victory points, but they're also going to get the jewel that's there. And they have the little player aid written here on the board where it says silver's worth three, gold's worth four, ruby's worth five. So first player there, they get to take the, the loot that's there. Second player, they only get the victory points. Now, first player can get the victory points too, but uh, second player just won't get the treasure as well. So that's, that's the benefits of going first. And of course, tiebreakers are done by player order there. Now, the other two tokens I told you about, if a player does have either or both of these, they can also play them face down. What the ghost ship token does is basically just a red herring. You can place it somewhere on the board. Maybe you want to see what other players are going to go for first before playing out your next token. And they don't know this from, you know, one of your other numbers. You know, so it could be looking like this, like, oh, where's that ghost ship? I don't know. So you could throw it out there just to, you know, pass and see what other players are doing or to fake other players out. I actually got faked out once and put my number one right here because I thought this guy put his number one and it turned out being his ghost and I wasted my number one. Uh, the interesting one, though, is the uh, big uh, Golden Hind. Uh, golden Hind trumps everything. It even trumps the one. It's almost like a value of zero. So, for instance, if let's say this was a blue token here and blue player played it here, then blue would go first because they have the Golden Hind. Whoever has the Golden Hind will definitely go first. And there's only one available each round. Even if you shuffle up some of the other cards here, there's only one Golden Hind. So that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to go in that order. Now what happens if there are three different players who pick the same spot? Let's say there are three players who played all here. Well, you would see who were the first two and they would take those top two spots. Now if any person could not meet those qualifications, they would be out and the next player would step in. And that's how it would work. So first player would get to, well in this case, if let's say this is blue again, blue would go first. They would probably pick up that ruby if they got it. And if yellow couldn't do it, they'd fall out. And let's say there's a red token here. Red could come in, and then they could try to attempt to do it just to get the victory points. Now, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be going to each area in order. So all players will be going to all their number ones, either one there, one there, one there, one there, and then two, three, and four. And they're going to be going on and doing those actions and paying out those crew, guns, or trade. If they don't have enough for the round, then you know they can't get that reward. But as they're doing that, they are also looking over here on the board that uh, you want to attack a city. You want to attack a fortress and you want to attack a galleon. Each time you do that, as you see I was moving my cubes down here, those are accomplishments each round. Now depending on how many of these accomplishments you can do each round determine how many extra bonus victory points you have. So for instance, if I just did like any one of these, let's say I just did the galleon there, for any one I would just get one victory point at the end of that round. Now if I did two of those, I would get four points at the end of the round and if I could amazingly uh, hit up and ca you know capture a city, a fortress, and hit a galleon successfully, that would give, net me an extra 10 bonus points at the end of the round. So that's really cool. Now, one thing I do want to talk about is trade. Uh, if you do go to one of the trade things, of course, if you're first there, you get your pick of the litter. You would have to turn in one of these purple cubes, and then you could get any one of the tokens of you know whatever area you're on. Now, at the end of the game, you're going to add these up for extra victory points, and it it shows you right here how much they are. So just the coffee would be two victory points. If you had a match of coffee and sugar, that'd be worth eight. 
Uh, and then these can uh, compound in points as well. So for instance, if I had two coffees and one sugar, that would actually get me 10 points because I could put one coffee there, coffee and a sugar there, that's eight more points. If I have coffee, sugar, and tobacco at the end of the game, I get 16 points. And if I have all four items, including the indigo, I'm gonna get an astounding 26 points points at the end of the game, which really comes in handy. Now, after all players have gone, you're just going to pick up all of the tokens there. You're going to move these players back over to this track, and as you see, first and second player for the next round, first player will get two victory points, uh, second player will get one victory points just because they went first and second in that round. You'll take back your little uh, cubes there off the board, you'll push all these up on the little player track there. Of course, you're going to take back all of these little tokens. You're going to replace your big ship and it's going to get downgraded for the next round back to a small ship. Uh, also, I should mention, any leftover items that you have are discarded and thrown away. You have to start fresh again along the track. Of course, the player round marker will move up one. Of course, you'll take up all of these either ship tokens or soldier tokens and probably shuffle them around, use them for the next round. Same thing you're going to do with the uh, these three ship tokens here. You shuffle them around, you're pulling them back out again, and then the game will commence again where you're going around and doing basically the same things. And of course, at the end of three rounds, what you're going to do after that is add up your trade, add up any extra victory points you may have. Of course, you're going to bust open your treasure chest and see who has that many jewels, add up those points, and at the end of the round, the player with the most points wins. Now, I do want to show you the expansion that comes, uh, well, it doesn't come with this, but this is an expansion. The uh, expansion basically comes with a six player. It's a purple player. They give you all the cubes, extra cards and tokens to deal with it. There are also two little mini expansions in here called Montezuma's Legacy and uh, Spain's Revenge. Uh, I just put them on a little baggie here. But basically, these are just different cards for the galleons, uh, for the soldiers, and of course, for those extra ship tokens. If you want to make things just a little bit more harder and a little bit more interesting, that's what it, the expansion ha helps you with. And that is Francis Drake. Final thoughts what do I think about the game? Wow! You know, I had been holding off buying this game for the better part of a year. Um, I liked what I saw, but I was like, you know what, I already got a pirate game. I don't need another pirate game. I think pirates are kind of a, you know, there's a billion pirate games out there. And I hear people go, oh no, you need to try this, you need to try this one. Yeah, I don't know how many pirate games I need. Ooh, I need this one. <laughs> I was really happy I got it. Uh, there is a lot of strategy in here. Uh, you want to be the first to get through, so you can be the first to go in the second round, but you don't want to pass up all these other great opportunities, these other great spots on the board. So it's, you know, uh, give and pull a little bit. And that you can switch out the cards to have different orders for each game will make it different. But even just the base setup way, there's a million different strategies we had every other turn. So for all three turns, we had different strategies going in there. Oh man, this time I'm not going to be caught behind. Like one time I skipped so far ahead, I forgot I didn't get a single barrel till I went to the dock, got one barrel, and really limited my choices on what I could do. I was like, ah, I had all this great stuff and I couldn't hardly use any of it. I like that about the game. I like the choices. I like laying down those little markers where no one knows where your number one is. I may lay out my number four just to see if someone's going to go there. That may not be important to me, but see if it's important to them and see where they go first. Do you want to play your hand and act like that's the one? If you have the ghost ship, which seems totally pointless, I say, why would someone want the ghost ship? Oh man, it's awesome to have that gold ship. <laughs> and the golden hind, of course, is super nice to have because uh, it guarantees you a spot in whatever you're trying to do. I like how it divides, it makes you, it forces you to go to cities, fortresses, and galleons. Like hit all three because that's going to give you more bonus points each round. That's really good. I love how the game uh, kind of puts the, it gives you lots of options, but also structure it to make you go to certain options. I don't even know if that makes sense. Now, should you get the expansion? I would because I love to have six players, 
If you don't want six players, it's not worth getting. Those other two little mini expansions uh, are nice. They're not going to make that big of an impact in the game. Well, they do make some impact in the game, I should say. They are a little bit different. So if you want to switch things up, but this is mainly if you want a six player, which heck yes, I do. Uh, my gaming group can easily get to six. So anytime I have a six player game, I'm definitely going to get the expansion uh, to bring everyone to the table. And I can't imagine what it would be like with six players. By the way, they have these little overlay pieces that you can put on the board that allow for six players and it's just unbelievable I bet it's downright insane playing with that many people but that would also make it more fun as well so uh, should you get this yeah I think so I think it's a really good game if you think it's for you pick it up all right gamers that's it for now until next time game on